Let's talk rhubarb. Uh, rhubarb gin. Uh, maybe a crumble. I'm not our keen on rhubarb. Sharp, sweet, um, go, I mean, perfect in a crumble. What more do you need? I'm from Yorkshire, but I don't know much about rhubarb, why there is a rhubarb triangle, and what's it all about. So I thought I'd go on a wonder and find out for myself. I wandered up to a rhubarb farm to have a chat with a lady who comes from a long historical lineage of rhubarb growers. <laughs> I'm here in Rothwell, and I'm here in the heart of the rhubarb triangle, standing in an ocean of rhubarb with Rhubarb Royalty, the High <laughs> Priestess of Rhubarb, that's Janet Oldroyd. Hi, how are you doing? I am fine, thank, thank you. you. Your name, the High Priestess of Rhubarb, yeah. is a mighty, mighty title. Yes, I took it upon myself to basically promote this crop. Somebody just gave me that title and the media <laughs> liked it and it stuck. So what about your family history? Because you do have such an amazing long lineage. Yes, five generations. This obviously is outdoor rhubarb yep. uh, but this stage is important now as you can see that's been harvested that rhubarb and that's how we get young tender rhubarb at any point of the season because behind all the back of this Himalayan balsam are roots that are going into forcing sheds now they are not touched at all the fed the looked after we can't use weed control uh, on them, so hence the Himalayan balsam. But they live outside for two years and they're gaining energy and getting strong because that is what they'll grow from. These roots have been harvested. Right. They actually went in to make gin. Rhubarb gin's very popular now. So the, so the reason why Yorkshire is so special and unique for the rhubarb triangle is? Because of the climate. Right. Because of that substance there, that's wool waste mm -hmm. coming from the Yorkshire mills. Mm. That is put on the land before we plant the roots. Mm. It's very high in nitrogen. Rhubarb, besides liking a coolish climate, plenty of moisture, it's a greedy plant. Mm. So from the coal industry, outgrades of coal and coke that were no good for anything, fired the sheds. The frost, changes the composition of the root. If it doesn't come, and, and some years now when it struggle, we're late starting. So um, is Yorkshire the main place where people get the majority of their rhubarb from? Yes, for major supermarkets. It mostly tends to come from Yorkshire. It was discovered in 1817 in Chelsea because rhubarb was a medicine. It came to Yorkshire in 1877. This was the first place in the world that special sheds, the Yorkshire rhubarb sheds, were built just to produce rhubarb in the depth of winter. Right. People just gasp when they go into the forcing sheds. Mm. Once the eyes adjust to the darkness, they think, how's this plant growing? It's dark. And look, they're not even planted. <laughs> they're, they're growing from themselves. Mm. You know, it truly is a remarkable plant. Yeah. Wow, Ooh, spooky in here. These are the, the sheds where the rhubarb is for, so it's just really dark, it's just soil on the ground, and nothing happens in here until December time. That's when the action starts, when the roots will be thrown on the ground to grow. Ah, spooky, it's like a church in here, it's really cool. Janet took me to see where she stores and packs her rhubarb. Her father, Ken Oldroyd, spent a lot of time researching on how to present and package their rhubarb to the best standard. And the results are what we see on our supermarket shelves today. Before I left to continue with my wondering, Janet generously gave me a big box full of wonderful rhubarb to take around the county. Fabulous! Mm -hmm. It's starting to feel like an odyssey now. I love rhubarb. Growing up with it, eating it every day. Do you like rhubarb? Not today. So 
I'm here in Moulton at the Cook's Place with loads of Janet's lovely rhubarb and I'm here to see Jilly to see what kind of things she can make out of it. Hey, Hi Jilly! Oh, what you look what I've got for you. <gasps> I have got some rhubarb from the heart of the Yorkshire Rhubarb Triangle in Rothwell. Fabulous. And it's straight from the High Priestess of Rhubarb herself, Janet Allroad. Goodness me, and so what we've got to do is cook with it. Yep. <laughs> Let's get going. I think you need an apron because you're going to help. <laughs> Look at that. It's one of those ingredients that you can put with lots of different things. Mm. So when I say rhubarb, everybody goes custard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or crumble. Yes. So our dessert has got those elements in it. Mm -hmm. But we're going to make a sauce to go with chicken. Ooh. And we're going to put the chicken through a spicy flour mix and yeah. fry it and then put the rhubarb into the blender, make a sauce with some ingredients that will go through as they go in mm. um, and put it in the oven. I'm just going to cut these into pieces. Okay, so that. we've got honey, mm -hmm. we've got brown sugar, mm -hmm. soy, mm -hmm. we've got red onion and some garlic mm -hmm. and then we're thickening it with corn flour and the water to make the sauce Get that started. Yeah. Is that going to be a fast blend or...? Just to chop it. Yeah. Just so that there's room to put in the onion. Mm -hmm. That's it, just Ooh. get it in. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd mess that bit up. There you go. Voila. And then if I put the honey in, then you've got the soy down the side there. You can put that in next. Lovely, lovely. It smells gorgeous already. And pop that on the tray, take its leg. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the thighs and the drumsticks for this recipe. And then we've got in the bowl ahead of us, we've got some wonderful ingredients to actually put as a coating around the, ch the chicken, chicken pieces. We've got some flour, mm -hmm. some salt, mm -hmm. some dried oregano, mm. and you can use anything spicy. You can use a bit of curry mix, or you could use some paprika, mm. smoky paprika. This is quite a hot paprika we've got there. So if you just want to mix all that together, sure. and I'll do the messy bit, you can just spoon it over, just make it covered mm -hmm. like that. I'll add a few bits in. So we can carry on doing that until all the pieces are coated. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. So this has been sitting in our nice spice mixture. We're just sealing the skin. Okay. It makes everything golden. <laughs> Pop it in the dish. Lovely. Mm. And we can just spoon the almost kind of like pureed rhubarb. But when you think of all the other good things that were in it, yeah. the honey, the soy, mm -hmm. And that acts as a, as a marinade as well, yeah? It will do. Yeah. So you could, if you didn't want the crispy element and those flavours, you could just marinate it in all of this mm. overnight even. Wow. It's so versatile. Yeah. So just think, what shall I put in it? Rhubarb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a bit of that liquid over the top. And then it's nice, just before they go to eat it, to just take a little bit of the extra sauce. Lovely, look at And that. just drizzle that over the top. That's splendid. And then, because we want to be really chefy, <laughs> we'll just take a little bit more of the dill and sprinkle it on. Fantastic. <laughs> I want my tea. The grandchildren just pull it and eat it. I love yeah. I love rhubarb. Yeah. What I don't like is when it gets too fat. Getting a brown paper bag full of sugar and stick sticking it in like a sugar sherbet dipped up. I still have heaps of Janet's rhubarb left over. Where else might I take it? Ah yes, the liquor studio in the centre of Leeds. John will be able to create something wonderful with it too. Hey John, I've got you loads of rhubarb. This is class. Work your magic Let's on that. Let's turn this into some gin. Yay! <laughs> right, so first step is I take the rhubarb that you've given me and I freeze it. Uh -huh. I just so happen to have some frozen rhubarb to hand. <laughs> uh, 
The reason why we freeze it is because, as you can see, it's kind of expanded. Now, the reason for that mm. is because water expands when it freezes. So the water that is inside this rhubarb will expand. And then when it thaws, it will kind of fall away and break apart all the rhubarb and all the enzymes inside will activate and basically all that flavor of rhubarb will come out in a more fresh, natural fashion than if you were to cook it. So that's the flavor right. we want. We want that cold, raw kind of flavor of rhubarb. Right. What we then do is we put it into our still. Mm -hmm. This is a still. Um, a still is essentially a kettle. Is it? it looks fancy, <laughs> but that's all it is. And basically what we're doing is we're putting alcohol in it. So we take a neutral grain spirit, which is vodka, fancy word vodka like a really strong vodka. We stick that in there, we stick our rhubarb in there, and then we set a fire beneath it or electric heat. So you have the boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius, and then the boiling point of alcohol, which is 78.6. Mm -hmm. So if we set the temperature to about 80 degrees, only alcohol is turning into steam. Um, and then it is being caught yes. here, and it goes down our little swan neck. We chill it back down here, and it turns back into a liquid. And then what has happened is all the alcoholic vapors have come off and with them they've took all the essential oils that come from the rhubarb. Right. And that comes off at like a high ABV spirit, about 80%. We don't want to drink that, that's a bit too strong. Right. <laughs> so then we add distilled water and we end up with a rhubarb distillate. So this Ooh, is our yeah. rhubarb distillate. So here we Cheers, go. Medus. Cheers. <laughs> this has been brought down to 40% ABV, okay. so it's not going to kill you <laughs> or send you blind. <laughs> But as you can see, it's completely colorless. But if yes. you spin it in your glass, mm -hmm. you see those like kind of oily residue bits that start coming down the glass? Yeah. Those are the essential oils. Oh, so right. the only thing that passes through is alcohol, vapor, and these essential oils. Right. So if we give it a smell, it should have a big rhubarb smell. Oh, yeah. So there's no sweetness that comes with this. So it's right. all just the natural flavor of mm -hmm. rhubarb but yeah. without that natural sweetness that you get. So that's why we then have a blending process where we add different elements to bring out the flavor of the rhubarb with little bits of sweetness from here and there. That could oh. be from licorice or coriander seed or lemon or orange. So rhubarb is our main component, but yep. we add different flavors to help boost the rhubarb itself. Oh, so right. cheers. Let's cheers, my dear. <laughs> oh la la. <laughs> yes. If this is your first shot of alcohol of the day. It is, it might be my last. <laughs> yeah. It's gorgeous though, I like it. Yeah, so that is our rhubarb distillate that the, we will then use to put into our gins. Oh, right. So what you're going to create now is a very small version of our most popular basic blend. So we have our base gin that we've already put in there for you. And what I want you to do is I want you to add 10 ml of the rhubarb distillate. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So then, yeah, so then with our pipette, because we're going to use a smaller amount now, oh. we're going to use lemon. So Lemon. And then right. to finish that off, so we've got rhubarb, which is really kind of dry and tart and mm. delicious, and it's got that fruity flavor. The right. lemon is going to lift it up a little bit. It's nice and li light and citrusy. Right. And then the thyme is going to add a little bit of herbaceous notes, which right. is what we want to like kind of give it a more rounder textured yeah. flavor. So we're going to add five ml of this as well. Five ml of this as well. Uh, right, there we go. That's it, way. So, Sorted. now, so here we have your first attempt at your rhubarb gin. So what we do is we give it a little stir, help all <laughs> those flavors amalgamate with each other. Uh -huh. And then... Am I to drink this now? You are to drink this. So it usually <laughs> takes about 24 hours for all the flavors to kind of come into yeah. their own. So that's obviously why we bottle it and give it you yeah. home to take home <laughs> with you. But for this, for the purpose of this exercise, you can have a little taste of it now and see how Ooh, it is. Ooh la la. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, that's smooth. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I like that, John. I do I like that one. <laughs> and that is your own little rhubarb gin. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Stewed, crumbled. Uh, I even make rhubarb ginger jam. She's rushing home for tea. She's having rhubarb. She's having rhubarb. <laughs> I've grown up in Yorkshire and lived in Leeds pretty much most of my life, but I've never known much about rhubarb, except that sometimes you get it in your school dinners. So from going to thinking about rhubarb as just an old fashioned pudding to, you know, the rhubarb triangle, what is it? A mysterious place where people disappear, probably drowned in custard. I've learned quite a lot. I'm definitely going to Janet's forced rhubarb shed tours in the winter where I can see and hear, yes, hear rhubarb growing in the dark. And we didn't have time to show you, but 
Jilly, the cookie molten, made a posh rhubarb and custard dessert made with phyllo pastry and a mackerel dish made from pickled onions and rhubarb sauce. Absolutely delicious. I can still taste it now. And not forgetting John and his amazing gin. Can we uh, go back there and... Just get this done first, eh? <sighs> okay. I drag her away last time. So, rhubarb, a proper, unique taste of Yorkshire. Yeah. Right, sorted. Hey, can you do that wonderful magic thing with my wellies? And uh, my shoes could, you know, turn into wellies. And... So did you know that Victorian travellers brought it back from Siberia, all the way from Siberia?